As a belated Christmas gift and because the new year is just around the corner, I thought we will end the year 2021 with a huge candlestick special and have a lot of trading tips and insights that I have learned in my 14 years of being a trader. However, when we talk about pure candlesticks, I personally honestly don't believe that they work the way most traders believe they do. However, in the right context, they may work very well. And I am coming back to this off more and more over the next few videos. Many people believe that price is king and that may be true. However, there is one thing that is even above price and that is context. Context is the emperor, context is everything in trading, nothing goes beyond context. And in this video, I will show you exactly how to use candlesticks in the right context and how to really make them work. The first candlestick pattern that we will talk about in a top-down approach is the engulfing pin bar in a retest context. So what does this mean? How does it look? And this is a chart on the four hour time frame. You can see I marked this on the higher time frame. If you're wondering what time frame this is, always look here at the top left. It says four hour. And what we have, we have here an engulfing candle because this red candle is completely outside of the previous green one. It is also a pin bar. It has the component of the huge rejection wick and also look at where the rejection wick is pointing into. It is pointing into the previous support area, which is now retested as resistance. We are making lower highs. So already looking at this, we have a few layers of confluence. We have the candlestick, we have the retest pattern, we have the lower highs, and also you can see here on the left-hand side, this is called a void. This is a very strong price jump here. In a single candlestick on a four-hour chart, the market moved hundreds of pips. And what this often does is that the market is sucked into the origin of those candles. So let's jump to a lower time frame. And this is how the engulfing candlestick structure looks on the lower time frame. So here on the left, we have a head and shoulder. The strong candle here on the four hour is this one. Then the market had its head, its right shoulder here. So we're making significantly lower high. Then the head and shoulder is triggered. The market makes its first impulsive wave. So the Elliott wave count is reset. This is wave one. Wave two, here you can see the pin bar is also visible on the 30 minute time frame. It's retesting previous support, now resistance. We are able to define this corrective wave two by using a trend line. We also can plot here the previous swing points. So here's one, we would also be able to plot one here. However, this one has already been broken, so it wouldn't be super meaningful. So what we are doing now as a trading plan, you could, for example, trade the breakout right away. If you want to wait for confluence on the lower time frame and more context, you would wait for also a market to break into new lower low. So if the market gets below this first dotted line, we are breaking not only into a new lower high, but also the first time now a lower low, which would then set us off in the wave three in Elliott wave theory. And in general, wave three is a very, very high probability um, market structure. Usually in a trending context, wave three, that's where the market moves the most. You have information that the market has rolled over with wave one and wave two. And wave three is then the ideal trend wave that you want to trade. You can see this is what happened afterwards. The market broke the low. It broke the other low here. It retested this structure from underneath. This is wave three, wave four here, another corrective wave where we are very nicely able to put a flag pattern on wave four. The break and the retest of wave four then lead to wave five. So when you see that on the higher time frame the market is rolling over, when you see you have this void that you want to trade into, then ideally you would like to trade wave three or you can even trade wave five. If you are later than wave five, it's not really recommended to trade wave seven, wave nine, because as a trend progresses, the more trend waves you have, the higher the likelihood that the trend may not continue. And based on Elliott wave theory, the likelihood that a trend will end or even reverse increases as well when the trend wave count rises. Now we're looking at an engulfing candle with a trap context. So what does this mean? Higher time frame, four hour, a different forex pair. By the way, you can use it on any market, forex, stocks, indices, crypto, commodities, any market, it will work. And what we are looking at here is, first of all, we can see a mature trend. So the uptrend has started here, wave one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So at this point, it doesn't make so much more sense to look for long continuations. It's a little bit early to look for short continuations, but 
we can slowly maybe get into a short and or short oriented mindset, especially when we see this context here. We see that the market made a high here. We see the market made a high high here. However, if you put, for example, an RSI, a stochastic, a MACD, any momentum indicator will give you a divergence. Why is that? Because the market was not able to make a convincing higher high. Although the market made a higher high, the distance between the highs is very short and the market, in contrast to previous trending waves, wasn't able to push higher a lot. So we already have a lot of information that this is starting to look more and more bearish. We have also here this engulfing candle. So the red candle completely engulfs the previous green candle with a very strong close here to the downside. We have the tweezer component, which I will come back to in a, more, uh, in a, in a later part of this video. So basically you have two rejection wicks. And of course now a lot of traders would assume now it's the time to short. And this is what I was referring to in the beginning when I said I don't believe that candlesticks in a traditional or pure sense will work. So just because you see here an engulfing candle, um, you short, I don't think that is a high probability trade. So we need a little bit more confluence on our side and we need to stack the odds in our favor. So for that, we drop to a lower time frame, for example, the 30 minute. On a 30 minute, we are looking for a micro trend structure. So what do we have? We have a trend line here. We also have, um, we can identify the last swing low. So in the uptrend, the market makes higher highs and higher lows. And if you are looking for a downtrend and you want to short a market, you want to make sure that you're shorting when the market is making lower lows and lower highs. And we have neither of that right now. So we need to identify and come up with a trading plan. What would signal a, a, a trend reversal? And it's the breakout below this low because at this point, the market would start making its first lower low. So a trading plan could include if the market drops below 1.906, then we are looking for shorts. You could also um, look for a retest of this level. So this would be wave one. You wait for wave two, as in the first example, and then you look for continuations in wave three. Those could be interesting trading plans. And then we go much, much beyond just at uh, looking at the higher time frame engulfing candlestick. The higher time frame ca candlestick and in the context where it happens, a mature trend, the weak trend continuations with the divergence, that's one part of the puzzle. That's what gets us interested in a Forex pair. Then we drop to a lower time frame to find microstructure. And this is what happens. You can see the market started to make lower highs, exactly what we wanted. We have a breakout and then you can see we have a deep retest. We have another breakout and a retest of the structure and then the trend unfolded. So you can see if you just short uh, right away after the engulfing candlestick, in some cases it may work, in some cases it, it won't work. The market is just going to continue higher. In this example, you would have to sit through a lot of drawdowns back and forth. It's usually much better to wait for a breakout or a break and a retest and then join such a, a trade. Although we're looking at another engulfing, now we're looking at it in a context of a reversal. So higher time frame first. And we are now on the daily time frame. And what can we see? We see the market has been trading higher for a long, long time, many, many months actually. And you can see that the market topped out here. We have two inside candles after this continuation. And then you have here a very strong engulfing candle. You can also see that here seems to be an inverse head and shoulder, which has been triggered first. But if the pattern fails, if the head and inverse head and shoulder fails, this often leads to a reversal. So a very, very nice context. So let's drop to a lower time frame. And this is how the situation looks on the lower time frame. We have here the triple top. This is uh, what we're seeing here, the strong bullish candle, the two inside candles, and then the wick of the bearish candle. This is what we're seeing here, the two inside candles, the wick of the bearish candle. And then here, this is the full engulfing candle. We have also a previous resistance that is becoming support. And on the breakout, the market is coming back into the level to retest it. Also noteworthy is how the market is breaking this level with a very strong candle. You can see when we look at the whole um, chart context, at no point did we see ever such a strong bearish candle. This is a very special candle and it is really pointing towards a big shift in the market. Within the next candle, the market retested this area. And then here we have a continuation going down. So at this point, this is how it looks when the bearish candle, engulfing candle closes from the higher time frame. 
So only now, when we see the close of the bearish candle, that's when we drop to a lower time frame. So at this point, we have to decide what are we going to do? Do you jump in right away? Fair enough. In this case, you may put your um, stop loss somewhere around here, maybe to be extra safe here. Very conservative traders may put it even completely above the range. Another way how you could approach it is would wait for continuation breakout. Since we're timing our trade on the lower time frame, um, we can wait a little bit longer. You can see we're on the one hour chart, so maybe waiting one, two, three more candles, seeing if we can get follow through momentum because there is a likelihood or a possibility that the market will just bounce and then we don't want to be in such a trade where you're trapped between a resistance and a support level. It may be better to just wait for the market to um, complete the, the breakout or uh, complete the continuation rather, make its way through this level here and then get into the trade. And you can see um, the market struggled a little bit, not too much here actually. So in this case, um, you wouldn't have to wait much longer. Here you have your strong um, outbreak candle and then the continuation. So waiting for a few more candles is usually a, a much, much better bet in the long term. You can avoid the market where the breakout of the engulfing candle doesn't succeed. The market falls back in the range. Those scenarios can be avoided very easily. And then you are sitting on a trade. If you take the breakout here a little bit later, that looks much, much different. And you are now trading into lower lows. You're away from the highs and it looks like you're going with the momentum. Next is the shooting star. And it's a very, very gray pattern that I really like to trade. This is how it looks on the higher time frame. Again, mature trading context. We are making higher highs and higher lows. We have made them for a long time. And this is then looking like a reversal pattern, especially in this context. At this point, looking for a long continuation would be very much like chasing the trend. You are obviously now too late. The majority of the trend has passed. So don't chase here. It's better to um, either just forget about this or wait for signs like this one where you may be able to trade this to the downside. So the shooting star is a three candle reversal pattern. You generally have a huge bullish candle, then followed by a doji, it can also be a small pin bar. And then the next candle, in this case, you can see we have even a gap, which is the ideal scenario. You have a gap lower, you have the rejection first, and then the close of the candle here at the bottom. So this shows you the gradual change of momentum, strong bullish, neutral, strong bearish. And at this point, we drop to a lower time frame. And this is what we can see. We see that the market has a wedge here. We connect the lower side of the wedge and the higher side of the wedge. We have a, a continuation that is failing, or at least we don't know yet, but it looks like it's failing. This is what we are looking for. So at this point, you can see it looks like a continuation and then a rejection. A few candles later, rejection has been confirmed. We have not made lower lows yet. What we are making is lower highs. Here you can see after the failed rejection high, this is now what it looks on the right side. Here we have a previous resistance that is support and that is becoming support now. This is what I refer to as a lower bounce. It could also be called a breakout buildup. Um, there are different terms for that. Basically what it means is the market trades into a support and instead of bouncing away from it, it really sticks to the level. This shows you that the market is, there are not a lot of buyers here and the sellers are more and more interested. There are not many people who want to uh, buy this thing. And you can see shortly afterwards you have the breakout here. Again, uh, you always want to make sure to wait for the confirmed breakout, wait for the market to fully close outside of the range. This is also the 160, big round number. So that may be another area of confluence. And you can see afterwards the market really collapsed, traded lower, and this is where you had your big reversal chance. I have two very interesting variations of a pin bar. First, let's take a look at the pullback pin bar. A pin bar in this context is a continuation. So the market has rolled over from a uptrend to a downtrend. You can see the market has traded lower a few times. Here you can see we're still making lower highs. We have a breakout continuation with a strong momentum candle uh, below the past lows and you can see now the market is pulling back. Here you can see this is where we have the breakout candle, this or the, the pin bar rather, the pullback candle. So we have a small red body, we have the wick here, and this looks like the market is retesting this area. On the lower time frame, it looks like a really interesting flag. Flags, I made a few videos, you can search on my YouTube channel about them. Flags are considered among the highest probability um, breakout, 
patterns and especially if they happen in the right context. What is the context here? The context is the downtrend here. The context is the big, big uh, bearish candle with the immediate pullback into the lows. If this support now actually turns into resistance in this context, the flag makes so much sense. You can see a triple tap. If you have watched my latest video about price action patterns, this is a triple tap. We have a tap, tap, tap. So we have three consecutive higher highs and each higher high is weaker. And this also shows you the gradual um, shift of the powers. The bulls are losing interest and the bears are getting more and more interested. You can see we could also draw here a support level, previous resistance turning into support and on the breakout of the trend line, which would then trigger the flag and also this level that is right in here. This is where you would then look for a breakout entry. You can see this is what happens. We have the triple tap. After the triple tap, a lot of traders also like to go to a lower time frame. So we are now on the 30 minute. You could have gone after you see this, you could have gone to the five minute, for example, and then traded the actual breakout here of the trend line. In some cases, like in this, the market will just run away because there's just so much force behind it. Keep in mind, we have so seen a lot of bearish momentum here already. And then here with the triple tap, there's a lot of pressure building. The triple tap is among the most high probability patterns that you can find as a reversal pattern. And then you can see everything comes together here on the trend line break on the trigger of the triple tap in this bigger picture downtrend.